Aloha, and welcome to the ninth and final episode of Talk Story with House Majority. My name is Della Albalati, and I serve as the House Majority Leader for the state of Hawaii's 30th legislature. On Friday, July 10th, the legislature adjourned sine die for the 2020 session, passing a number of key bills that now move on to the governor's desk for his approval. We also said goodbye to six departing House members. Today, we will be joined by my good friend and departing House colleague and the only Republican that has been invited to this show at this time, Representative Cynthia Thielen. Later, we will talk to House Speaker Scott Psyche on the highlights and challenges of this unique session. Be sure to place your questions on the live stream featured on facebook.com backslash Olelo community. I am very, very excited to welcome my first guest, Representative Cynthia Thielen. Women, waves, and cannabis. What do these things all ha three, these three things have in common? Cynthia Thielen. Representative Thielen has been a voice for Windward Oahu since elected to the House in 1990. In her 29 years in office, she has garnered support by Republicans and Democrats for her bipartisan nature and effectiveness in getting legislation passed. She's known as the champion of hemp for working diligently to legalize industrial hemp as a viable agricultural product to boost Hawaii's economy. Representative Thielen is a beloved public servant with a steadfast commitment to her community and the people of Hawaii. After nearly three decades of service, Representative Thielen will be retiring from the House and she's here with us today to discuss her time at the legislature. Welcome Representative Thielen. Aloha, thank you for letting me join you today. So Representative Thielen, in your closing day speech, you remarked about your working relationships with Governors John Wahey and Ben Cayetano. I'm curious about your first foray into local politics when you staged a one-person, five-hour sit-in on Governor George Ariyoshi's office in the early 1970s. What prompted the sit-in? I woke up to headlines in the paper saying one of Governor Ariyoshi's staff members was quoted, we don't appoint women to boards and commissions. Those are important positions. And I went, what? <laughs> so I immediately went down to the Capitol and I asked to meet with Governor Ariyoshi because I wanted to be appointed to a board or a commission and be able to provide my expertise and experience. So I waited and I waited and I waited and it ended up being a five hour wait, but I was determined to see him. And I think that message got through to him. So we met and the result was I was appointed to one of the transportation boards. And this is good. It was a beginning. So it was a beginning. And I want to uh, maybe throw a little bit of a, uh, a different question at you. But you had a great partner in your life because at this time you were a young mother. Can you share with us uh, who your partner was in this in this fantastic political journey that you've been on? Well, my, my husband, Mickey Thielen, we have four children who are just absolutely wonderful. And he was just a rock of support, a rock of support. And I would bounce ideas off of him. And we just, um, it meant such a lot to me to have that strong support from him. I think it's so important. You know, they always say there's a good woman behind a, a male leader. Or, well, there's always a good partner behind any leader. And that and Nikki really, really was your partner. He's so dearly missed. So shifting um, tracks a little bit, you know, your political career has been marked by a deep abiding commitment to the environment. What's been the drive behind this commitment? What would you tell young people who now um, mirror that commitment and are driving are driven by these problems? I had the, the privilege of being able to represent the Protect Kaho Lavi Ohana during the early 1980s. I was one of the attorneys for the PKO. And I met such giants as Harry Mitchell, uh, Dr. Emmett Aluli, and of course Emmett is still one of the major leaders of the Hawaiian movement. And when I would go out to the island with them on the early accesses, we would of course go out by small boats and then we would swim ashore, dragging our ukana in plastic bags to get onto the island. And then we would spend maybe three, four, five days there and learning from them about Aloha Aina and the responsibility that we had to the next generations and how to preserve and protect our land. 
I mean, it was an amazing experience. Um, I also think back to Teddy Roosevelt, our president, our environmental president, who was such a leader. So those things all have made a difference to me. And I realize that we are stewards. We're stewards for the next generations. And we have to remember that in everything that we do. When you allow seawalls to be built and the beach erodes away, that's the wrong thing to do. So we just need to keep doing the things that we look at the long generations with an S, generations, we're the stewards. I think that's a really important for young activists now, right? You have to look long-term. And I really appreciate that message about how you found mentors and partners in the community because I think, and connected with the land, that that's so important. Um, I wanna switch, to, switch it up a little bit. You know, we haven't done this, on this um, program yet, but I have some rapid response, lightning round questions. I'm gonna ask it to you quick and we just need a quick response and hopefully this will be fun for our viewers. So with your 30 years of service in the state house in politics, first question, what's the most surprising moment you've ever witnessed as a state legislator? About two decades ago, when the Speaker of the House left off, leapt off the podium and came running over toward me, poised as if he was going to sock me because I had publicly disclosed his breach of ethics. And fortunately, I mean, I stood there waiting to get hit. <laughs> and fortunately, the sergeant at arms intervened. So that's probably my most unusual an unexpected experience decades ago, Speaker. Who is the most colorful character in the state legislature you have ever encountered? That's an easy one, but it's multiple people. And those are testifiers that come in to the Capitol and then they actually will either change a bill, change the language, kill a bill, I've seen that happen, or make it even more expanded. Um, and I think the public, I would say, are the most colorful characters, not all of them, but certain members of the public that come in and make a huge difference here. That's a great answer. Okay. What is the most favorite part of the legislative session for you? Well, that would be the committee hearings, because that's where we really get the back and forth with ideas. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because by asking questions, you can get fellow committee members to begin to take a look at, oh, well, maybe we should pay attention to this, that, or the other. So it's a it's kind of a very moving um, situation, and I love it. It's my favorite part. What is your least favorite part of the legislative session? My least favorite and the times when I feel the most frustrated are when the last minute gut and replace of bills where you've gone ahead and had a wonderful bill, I think of our hemp bill from the house, and it was a wonderful bill. And then at the very last minute, it morphs into something that is just totally different. And it becomes so frustrating because you can't grab a hold of it. It's happened behind closed doors, public doesn't get to testify, and that's my least favorite part. That is probably one of the most challenging parts. So what is the most important policy area leaders need to focus on in the next five years? That's that's really direct. It's like helping our people get jobs. I mean, that's so incredibly important, helping get them back to work, helping the small businesses survive. Some of them are just barely hanging on. Some of them have closed but helping them and putting a limit on tourist visits to some of our natural resources to say the resources are more important than just opening them without any restriction whatsoever. We have a real opportunity now to see how our environment is beginning to heal and we ought to take the smart step and say, okay, limits, tourist limits, they can go, but limits. Manage, manage tourism. I'm, I'm hearing a lot about that in the community right now. So last rapid fire question. What is the best tradition of the state house that you'll miss next year? That would be opening day. Because what I love about opening day is all legislators' doors are open. 
they're all open and the public can come in, they can mingle, the public meets um, each other, other people that are concerned about different issues. And it, it's just, it's a wonderful open day and something that uh, it's been so meaningful to me year after year of my 30 years here in the House of Representatives. I'll have to admit that that is one of my favorite days too, and we're gonna miss you on our next opening day. Um, you know, last wrap up question before we bring on Speaker Psyche. You know, thank you for your leadership in founding the Women's Legislative Caucus. Um, that has been, for me, something that has been um, a place where we can really talk about issues and build relationships. Thank you for your willingness to work across party lines. You've described yourself as an Eisenhower Republican and pride yourself as an independent. Both of our parties right now, I feel like, are affected by sometimes polarizing ideologues. What would be your advice to any politician, Democrat, Republican, Green, Aloha Aina, about the importance of maintaining independence? And what practical advice would you give to young politicians to fortify their independence in our ever increasingly polarized political arena? I would say to make friends and to learn what is important to those friends. What are the issues in their community? What are their broader issues that they really care about? And find a way that if you can work together on those. And then for your own particular issues, reach out and try to educate colleagues I know that people almost used to run from me when I would come up and say, I want to talk about hemp and why it's such a fantastic crop and we don't have to lose our agricultural lands, but to to re have it be a back and forth with how can you help them and how can you work together on different issues? And that's not political, that's not partisan, that's issue specific. And when you focus on issue specific, ideas and goals, then I think you form alliances that transcend the political parties. Cynthia, Representative Thielen, you just like given the most important words of wisdom I've heard in a long time. It's politics is about friendships. It's about relationship building. It is about um, understanding where we come from in our communities. And that's so important. And I think that's what makes Hawaii so unique and what makes you so special. So I wanna bring on our next guest. Uh, we haven't really done this, so we'll see if this technologically works out. Representative Thielen, during your farewell, farewell remarks, you spoke of your gratitude to Speaker Psyche for his friendship and leadership. We have Speaker Psyche here to join us as we discuss leadership, collaboration, and all of our shared commitment to the people of Hawaii. So I just wanted to see if uh, Speaker Psyche, did you want to say anything to uh, Representative Thielen now or have a little bit of an interchange now that we have both of you on? Well, Rep. Thielen, we're going to miss you. And even though you retire, you're retiring, we know that we're going to still be in contact with you a lot um, going forward. Well, so thank I you. thank you so much. I, I consider you both such dear friends. And I have had such a wonderful time working with you here at the Capitol. Some big arguments on different things, but that never hurt the friendship. That's what I really liked. Thank you so much, Representative Thielen, for your years of service. Uh, we're going to ask you to kind of um, uh, sign off now, and we want to wish you the very best in your retirement. Aloha and mahalo. Like Speaker Psyche said, we know that we're going to hear from you, and we expect to hear from you. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Aloha to you all. Aloha. Thanks. Take care, Cynthia. We'll see you. Now, Speaker Psyche, before we get into our session highlights, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your philosophy on leadership. So we've worked together uh, with one another for over 14 years. It's kind of hard to believe that uh, when I first came into the legislature. And I think I can say this publicly, you are very reserved and quiet, but what the public often hasn't seen is how principled you are, almost to the point of being so stubborn and your commitment to social justice, civil rights, reform and good government, and ensuring that the playing field is level. Can you share with our viewers what drives and informs your desire to serve the community? Well, I, th I think that um, being in the house helps a lot because um, the house for the most part is um, very, um, very grounded and it helps to have, you know, colleagues who are kind of the, of the same mindset. I think for me, you know, bottom line is that if something 
doesn't make sense, then you really shouldn't move it. And that's just the gut level, the gut level check. And um, I think that you, after a while, you, you, you know, be, get into a position where you can, where you re realize that something just doesn't make sense, and that we really shouldn't spend time on it. So that's so, that's the basic for me. So it comes with experience. Um, you know, following up on this on this, you know, question of leadership. I've often heard you talk about how the Hawaii House of Representatives can be a key leader in our state's political arena. Can you share with our viewers your thoughts on this, the role of the Hawaii House of Representatives? Yeah, so we have, um, you know, 51 members. And um, so in state government, we represent the smallest units of government. And, you know, we are, are, are the House is just made up of a diverse group of people. Um, you know, based on just not geography, but based on, on backgrounds, um, age, gender, um, ethnicity. I think that, that, that just lends itself to um, better policy, policy making and decision. Now, you've had some very strong um, positions about the role of the legislative branch as opposed to the other branches of government. Can you expand upon that a little? Because I think in this time when there is kind of sometimes people criticizing leadership, I think the House has really stepped forward. So can you explain about that? Why you, why do you think the legislature plays such a key role? I want the House members to understand that the legislature is the is um, actually the most powerful branch of government. And we have three separate branches, but the legislature is the most powerful. And that's because we um, we set policy for the state and we do that through um, our, our, our authority to appropriate funds, to, uh, to enact laws, and to override uh, the, the governor if he vetoes um, any of our proposals. So I just, I, I always try to remind the House members that they have to, re that they have to remember that they, that they, that the House, that the legislature um, is really in, in a position to, to control things, to make really good decisions for our state, and that we shouldn't shy away from that responsibility. I think it's really, it's just really important that each and every member um, understand that. I think for lawmakers, it's really important because it's easy sometimes to forget that when you're one of 51, but it's through that those laws, that body of law, and, and as you said, that appropriation that's so important. And I think we have demonstrated particularly over this session, how important those those um, powers are. So we have this rare opportunity to reflect a little bit on the 2020 legislative session. I kind of wanted to talk to you about the session in two parts because we started with such great hope and then of course the pandemic hit us. So from the first part of the session, what are the key highlights um, from, from that first part of the session before we went into the state stay-at-home orders for you? Yeah, so I think that the general... Um the general thr thrust of the session did not change from the first phase to the second phase when we began our session in January, which seems like such a long time ago. Um, our focus was to address um, the Alice families. It's basically the families, the, almost 50% of the families in Hawaii that, um, that are just struggling uh, financially. And that was our, that was our um, emphasis in January, when we proposed uh, creating um, uh, a new preschool early education program, uh, uh, a housing a housing proposal, and also economic relief, tax relief for for working families. Um, when we moved into the pandemic, um, the focus on the Alice families remained, and that was the that was the impetus of our of our package that we during the session that we just completed. So that's another example of your focus that I think people sometimes don't realize that we do actually, you know, the, the, the legislative process sometimes seems very chaotic, but when you have this time to reflect, it really is that we were focused on immediate relief for Alice families. So what were some of the key highlights or what are some of the things that you'd want to make sure people remember about the second half and what we were able to accomplish um, with some of the legislation we passed? Yeah, so the legislature took the lead in providing um, what I would say is some short-term short-term relief for families, and that was through the uh, authorization for um, a state uh, unemployment plus up of $100 per week uh, 
between August 1st through December 30. Um, that will benefit um, over, over 200,000 uh, individuals who are on unemployment. The second thing is the rental assistance program that the legislature created. This will provide a $500, up to a $500 per month uh, grant, rent, rent assistance grant to probably over 20,000 households in Hawaii. Um, you know, those two, those two components alone, um, I think, will go a long way in um, providing some stability for people uh, through the rest of the year. Um, we're, we are eagerly awaiting um, action by the federal government, by the Congress, to provide the states with more funding so that we can um, continue benefits past uh, January 1st. So we're coming to a close and I just wanted to ask you, you know, just as we asked Representative Thielen, you know, what do you view as some of the most pressing issues for the next five to 10 years as we kind of climb out of what is going to be probably the biggest economic challenge facing, facing our state? Yes, absolutely. Uh, reopening the economy is going to be priority number one because this will uh, help every single person in Hawaii. Uh, we have to do this um, safely. We know that health, uh, public health is, a top, is the top priority. So as we begin to reopen the economy, we have to make sure that people will be safe and healthy. Um, you know, one of the statistics that just came out recently from your hero was that it will take us about 10 years to reach the um, the unemployment rate, the pre-pandemic unemployment rate of about 2.9%. Um, you know, 10 years is a, is a long time. And I think that we have to um, we have to be pretty aggressive in how we want to reopen the economy. Although it will be done incrementally, we have opportunities to um, to kind of reshape um, the economic infrastructure in our state. We have to learn from um, prior. We have to basically uh, take lessons from um, from prior experiences. Um, I think this is, this is a great opportunity though for us to reshape how we how we do business in our state. We can't be over reliant on certain um, sectors, although I will acknowledge that you know tourism, military and agriculture will always remain a big part of our, of our economy. but there are, we have to be open to doing things in different ways going forward. I think that's a sound kind of message and approach. You know, we're in a time in our history, probably as dramatic as it was when we entered statehood and we saw the advent of the the airplane, right? We are at this time where our economy is being reshaped. And I just, I think our focus on Alice is going to be good. So speaker, we're, we're wrapping up. Any last final thoughts? This is your your stage, would you like to say anything more? Because this is going to be our last episode of Talk Story with House Majority for the 2020 session. Well, I, I, you know, I, I just want viewers to know that, you know, even though our session ended, that the members are still are still are working mm -hmm. um, for, to plan for next session, because we know that there'll be a lot of work ahead of us um, and that the members, the House members remain focused on the key, the key priorities for our state. And the other thing is, you know, I just want people to, to remember that the House, even though we have 51 members, we're all like in the mode of, of representing Thielen. We're all independent thinkers. The House is a very independent body. And um, I think that um, the House is serving the public very well. So thank you, Speaker Sy Scott Psyche. Thank you for this opportunity to be Majority Leader for the State House. Thank you, Representative Cynthia Thielen, for joining me on the final episode of Talk Story with House Majority for 2020. Thank you also for your over 30 years of service to our community and the people of Hawaii. So it's more important than ever that we stay connected and informed during these uncertain times. The House Majority, as Speaker Psyche said, will continue to stay connected through our various social media platforms. Please follow the House Majority on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at High House Dems for updates and happenings at the Capitol and throughout the state. You can also visit our website at HawaiiHouseDemocrats.com, which has resources, press releases, and valuable information on how the House Majority is responding to COVID-19. Please, please, please stay safe and healthy by practicing physical distancing when you are out and about. Stay informed and stay connected with us. I hope to see you on our social media platforms, to hear from you at our legislative offices, and most importantly, to see you sometime in the future in our community. 
with Aloha Della Alvalade. Mm-hmm.